All right, apprentices, Metasolar here, and we are back with another video. Now, if you guys had seen one of my most recent challenges, whenever this video is coming out, it's either it has come out or it hasn't come out. We had a bot lane that unfortunately made the mission failed. So today, I thought let's go ahead and do a challenge, uh, educational video showing you guys what you can do to make sure your bot lane doesn't run it down. So today we're going to be doing everything in our power to make sure that we get a winning bot lane just on a recon and that Ezreal and Thresh do not see the light of a winning day. I mean, it is an enemy Ezreal, so we already got an advantage. So that's like a plus one right there. As Tempest said, that's, a, that's like a plus ten right there. But, you know, we still have to do everything we can to, you know, make it a little bit more optimal. Overall, the enemy team composition is really nasty. They have a Kale Olaf, so that literally Olaf for about two seconds to two to three seconds is actually immortal to everything. Because he presses R, he's immune to CC. Kale also, he's immune to damage. Hmm. So, legitly, Kale, uh, Olaf is immune to everything. He is literally an unstoppable juggernaut for two whole seconds. Okay, Riot. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead. We're going to start blue buff, and we're going to do a three camp clear, and then we're going to look just try to get top lane or mid lane in a nice advantage spot. But if not, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make deal. So here's another thing I've also decided to run this game, guys, is a lot of you guys are having trouble with Olaf's. Here's a little, here's a little secret about Olaf, guys. Olaf's first clear is one of the most unhealthiest things on the face of this earth. So, if I am forced to not be able to gank my top or my mid, then my best option is just go ahead and deal with him at his blue buff. Guys, if you catch Olaf in his jungle, you will kill him. It is amazingly well done for that. So, what we're going to do here, we're going to just, you know, we're doing that 3 camp clear. And we're just going to double dot this bad boy. And then we're going to go running, honey. See? Look, we're going to run, 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 run. Laugh at my jokes. I am adorable. That's what's funny. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna take up our red buff. So right now, when you're cleaning your camps, take a look at your laners. Get a good idea of what you need to do. So in this case, top lane, that's not even a gank. Sometime in this century, mid lane could definitely be a gank. So we might look to go there. So let's go ahead and in a position for this. I'm gonna W, and we're gonna get get in position. I'm gonna hold. And there we go. We didn't even have to flash. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to fake like we're going to our red side. But we're going to immediately turn the second we get out of bush to uh, go deal with Olaf. Hmm? No. Oh. Oh, yeah. We're going to go help Fiora. So, hopefully, Fiora can uh, last a little bit longer without us. Yeah, yep. He did. But Mena, I thought this was a video about how to make sure your bot lane doesn't feed. Of course, yes it is. While it is a video about make sure your bot lane doesn't feed, guys, I want to make sure you're always seeing that your plans have to be adaptable and change. As you saw there, guys, while I want to go help my bot lane, I'm doing everything I can to go ahead and make sure that the rest of my team wasn't isn't a loss factor as well. So let's go ahead, take a nice reset, and let's start actually doing what this video is about and making sure our bot lane is a win condition. Because, guys, in your average game, you're not going to always get a bot lane that's going to go 1 and 9. Oop, bought the wrong thing. Let's undo that. You're not going to always have a bot lane that's going to go 1, uh, 0, and 3 by 4 minutes. So, in your average game... There we go. Oh, I can even be like walking on the top. In your average game, you're going to have, hopefully, a bot lane that's, you know, there's 0, 0. There may be a CS up, a CS down. It is what it is. But we did everything we could, responding, getting a set mid, set top, so that way, what we start doing when we put our attention bot lane, we're going to get some magic worked out there, my friends, and that's what we're looking for. So, first things first, guys, before the enemy champions really start getting any kind of lead, before they're able to get those first backs, the warding at bot lane is going to be really weak. So you can definitely look for a good opportunity to go ahead and gank bot lane. I'm going to sweep this bush first. And then we're going to come in through wide. We're going to come in wide, as always. And this gank, this gank I'm going to go for the the first person I can hit. Got pulled under. Damn. Ooh, give the buff to red. 
All right. But on the bright side, we did burn a lot of their summoners. So, yeah, guys, the game didn't work out at the best. But on the bright side, we did burn out all their summoners. As you guys saw, the game didn't go too well. So one of the unfortunate parts of um, this game that we're demonstrating for you is that is a Thresh and Ezra lane. So those are one of those lanes that are really, really, really tough to make those kind of plays. So you kind of want to avoid going for too deep of a dive. As you saw, my focus here is I am going to go ahead and focus the Thresh because the Thresh is the easiest target for me to, you know, latch on. And that's kind of what you always want to kind of go for overall. You want to go for those... I want to grab... Oh. oh, wait. I actually just missed my... I actually missed my dodge. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Ooh, I have just made things worse. Gave him another kill. So, what you need to do is say, okay, why am I, what am I making mistakes on? You're making... I'm, right now, I'm running into Thrash. I'm not really respecting those lanterns. But... On the bright side, the enemy team is burning so much resources on me that they're not really burning out on my teammates. So, it's funny enough, but sometimes causing the enemy team to waste resources on you is just enough of a lead to go ahead and give your team the advantage they need to turn the game around. So, one thing we all we do want to take advantage of is that our bot lane has just opened up the cannibal mass. As you can see. As you guys can see, they are actively just d tower diving the Thresh, and you know, they're taking the momentum that they've gotten and just absolutely dominating with it. They are a level up because I'm sure you guys probably saw this, but after all that craziness at bot lane, their wave was a huge, massive wave of XP for our bot lane that they all grabbed while the um, enemy bot lane was not. So, first things first, one of the things you guys can do to, again, secure a lead is. Punishing it every time. Oh, sorry. Punishing every time that only one of the enemy ADC or support are under the tower by themselves. Uh huh. Oh dear God, that is a um. That's a, that's a rise. That's too bad. Oh, by the way, guys. Um, what I did to top lane. <laughs> It, my KL 13 CS yes, at um 40 uh nine minutes. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure K will not be a problem this game. All right, so here's another thing you can also do, guys. When you have a bot lane that is four and one, sorry, five and one, start looking to do other things around the map to take advantage of the downtime between dragons. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually go ahead and grab, go ahead and grab the dragon, the the rift herald, and we're gonna take a bot lane. So everybody saw that. Nobody saw that. All right, YouTube. If you saw that, comment and make a comment in the comment section down below. If you didn't, which you didn't, then don't. All right, let's go ahead and grab this. So, as I was saying, what you're gonna look to do, guys, is you want to go ahead and grab the Rift Herald. So. Optimally, you want to get your first Rift Herald between 10 and 12 minutes. Now, this Rift Herald is going to allow you to open bases, and if you're able to get a single gank off, you can absolutely get a 5 a five uh, turret plating down to a 0, which is an amazing turnaround for your team. Alright, so the main reason I'm not doing too, too hot right now against Olaf is I do not really have secondary combat runes, but also that I had a level disadvantage on that. So, you know, that was a little unfortunate. You kind of get melted for that, and, you know, it is what it is. All right, so we're going to go ahead and force the Rift Herald. Um, Olaf is top lane now, so we have a lot of the opportunity to go ahead and do what we need to. So we're going to force Rift Herald, and we're going to take it straight to bot lane. Because what we want to do is we want to take that 5-in-1 bot lane and open it up to the rest of the map. So here's another thing. A lot of you guys ask, you know, what happened, you know, I had a 5 and one bot lane and, you know, they didn't start snowballing the game out of, out, absolutely out of control. <coughs> you know, what happened? Well, so what hap what's happening right now is a good example of why your 5 and 0 bot lane is no longer winning games for you and they just suddenly become like 0 and 5 and 8. They're not doing objectives and forcing out the map. So, guys, here's the thing. When your team has a 1k gold lead, when the enemy team has 4k gold and you have 5k, that's a big difference of gold. Uh, I wasn't able to get in range. No big deal. But when you're 15 gold, 15,000 gold, 
and 16,000 gold, then it's not that big of a deal. So the main thing you need to look for is you need to open the map as soon as possible to get your bot lane to get it out of their lane. They don't need to sit there anymore. So right now, what I'm doing is effectively I'm opening up the map for our team. I am saying, no, we are not going to sit under the tower. We're not going to sit under the tower. We're going to make some plays, you know? Oh, wow, they actually went for that. I'll be honest, I did not think they were going to commit anymore. All right, we're done, we're done, we're done. I don't have the mana to, to, to fight this, so I need to I need to walk away. If I get more mana, then yeah, I could absolutely turn this to crap, but we're not gonna we're not gonna overcommit. All right, so that's what you gotta do. You gotta get your teammates to get off their literal asses and do what you need to do to get to get them to do that. So what we're doing here, guys, is I'm pretty much I'm forcing bot lane to start rotating elsewhere. Bot lane go mid. A Kali hold bot. Tell them what you need them to do, because sometimes people just don't know any better. They really don't. Sometimes they really don't know any better, and you have to guide them to the right answer. So, you're going to tell them, hey, you know, let's get you guys mid, and let's get you more tower plates for our team. Alright. No big deal. Bryce has, um... Bryce? Ooh, no, she shouldn't, be, she shouldn't be going back. Oh. Well, we could have gotten another plate there, but she doesn't want to get it. Okay, we don't force it. She wants to reset. That's fine. She's five and one, honest to God. So um, let's, uh, you know. I don't know why. I mean, she could be mad, but you know, I won her lane for her. Well, duh. I mean, like no shit, Jerlock. I mean, guys. Here, here's, here's the reason why Fiora's getting camped. Can he go mid? No. Akali will absolutely avoid his ganks. Can he go top lane? Can he go bot lane? No, because uh, Tristan is 5 and 1. That's a suicidal mission for him. He will die. So, where else is he going to go? He's going to go top lane. By recognizing which lane the enemy team has as a gank position, you can, uh, you can plan around it. Oh my goodness, he is just absolutely furious. But we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna suicide because you know she wants us to. Wow, that actually was a spicy meatball of damage. But <clears throat> all right, so again, now we're just gonna focus on just really opening up the map and we're gonna keep it going. All right, so here's what we're gonna go ahead and do, guys. We're gonna go ahead and just do a full clear. Just in case this video gets a little bit long, we're gonna, you know, provide a um, area where we can have a little cutout. Just, you know, just so I can farm and uh, talk to Chris Chat, and we'll be right back with you, YouTube, once we get out of base. So, honey, how do you think this game's going so far? I mean, on. It, it, it is a it was a bot lane focus, but again, we're adapting to what it is Well, like we get, there was no reason for us to go bot lane because we set up our success elsewhere So it is what it is and it's okay Gila Bear. I understand I'm boring to you You're not hurting me too much On the inside Uh, Do I have Triforce yet? No, 33. Ooh, I am way way far Oh damn. Um, say about fifteen thirty. About fifteen thirty yeah, is a break moment. Okay. All right, YouTube, and we are back. And you know, we unfortunately we, we died to Olaf, and we picked up our Ninja Tabbies and a lot of components of our of our Triforce. But you know, we still have a little bit to go. Let's go ahead and use our Hex Flash over this wall. I think I'm slow. I think I'm too slow to catch up. Oh, she had flash. All right. So not bad, not bad. We burn flash and ult, which I think is you know really really big. Bring it. Good job. I know. I'm, I'm such a good boy. And since Fiora's gonna sit bot lane, we're gonna help ourselves to all this beautiful farm. <laughs> so 
now what is what is our mission right now? So right now our our Tristana is definitely doing really well. We have prevented we you know we set them up for success. The enemy team burned a lot of resources on us, and you know, yeah, we didn't do the most amazing ganks in the world, but we did what we needed to do. There we go. And let's go ahead and start hitting bot lane. I mean, this Fiora is just angry. I don't know why she's getting carried, but, you know, she's doing what she's doing. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start working our way bot lane. And we're going to play off of Tristana. So what we need to do here is we need to play, lack of a better word, protect Tristana. Oop, we did not protect the Tristana. There we go. Oh, man. We only had that Fiora all the earlier. We've been good. There we go. I think Fiora is good. Yeah, she's good. She's good to go. There we go. Alright, not bad. Not bad at all. Alright, um, so, anyways. So, you guys have a 5 2 4 Tristana, and why is it the game with me won? Because you need to be the one to guide them to the success. A lot of players, especially at low elos, don't have the good macro. They don't know what to do besides fight constantly. And they don't know to go for objectives until after they ace. A good example is this Fiora and Akali. What they should have done, they should have forced a dragon. Right now, we had a great position to go ahead and force dragon. <laughs> With their jungler being dead and, you know, Ezreal's backed off. He's not going to get anywhere near that dragon. That's a great opportunity to go ahead and force that thing. Now, instead, since they delayed on getting over there. There's a chance that we lose the dragon now. Luckily. Oh, no. Never mind. Not luckily. We still lost it. Like I said. Because we're not there to be there on the spawn. Like we should have been. So, there's like there's a ma mechanical misplay by the team. And just kind of a good example why you need to be the one to guide them to the right answer. So, what I should have done is I should have been pinging them. Hey, you know, let's go ahead and do this objective. Let's get, let's get guys need to do the dragon. So that Olaf could not just walk around and do the Olaf right there. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can make a hex flash play. Mm, I'm probably dead anyways. Ay ay ay. All right, YouTube. So, if you probably notice, I just kind of didn't buy items because I need to get over here right now to the Baron to try to go for a steal. Hopefully, we have some vision. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to do the shit blind. Mm. Ah, feel bad. Didn't get the smite. It is what it is. I had to go about. I had to go about a bit too blind on that, but eh. we both smited about one k, but Kale got the last hit. Feels oodier, man. All right, so we're gonna definitely need some MR right now to try to go ahead and lock this game down. Go ahead and get the wits end. It's kind of sad, like. A perfect example, guys, is I did not give Fiora any more energy, and look what happened. She went from stomping that Fe that Kale to absolutely getting outclassed by her. It's just, you know, some champions, all they need to do is get to that mid to late game. Kale, Fiora had a beautiful head start, but she let her ego, her lack of macro, cause her to start falling further and further behind. And then she started getting angry when she got camped, letting her, you know, that again, that ego play into it. And instead of, you know, playing well and farming well or saying, okay, I'm getting camped, she just said, okay, you know, I, I want to start losing this game now. So that's what happened. A lot of people, you know, they let, that's why camping works so well in your elo. Camping causes players like Fior to just start throwing the game because they can't calm down. That was actually a good fight if we uh, get, get a kill on anybody. If we can delay their back, it would be probably in our best interest. Oh my goodness. This is freaking auto attack it through him. There 
we go. Yep, and she didn't get the inhibitor. That's what feels bad. Alright, so what we need to do now, we need to start working, bringing the team to the objective. You know, making sure that everyone's on the same page, and then, you know, we'll do what we do. So, what we're going to go ahead and do is... We're going to work our way down, and again, we see a situation building, so we're going to go ahead and switch position. Try to get in there instead. There we go. You know, we keep calm. We attack. We attack the Kale when the ult fell off of her, and then we swap targets immediately. And we're gonna just ignore that. Like, okay, see, we're not gonna do what we did wrong last time, where we left the dragon alone. If our teammates die doing it, then they're dying doing it. We are going to secure the objective so uh, our team just gets a little bit of a lead back. There we go. So, we're going to go ahead and, you know, kick back a second, guys. We're going to farm what we can, and we will see you after we get our wits end and build up our strategy from there. Oh, dear. It's a real video. That's perfectly fine. I like. I prefer. I don't want to demonstrate full stomp games every game. Oh. Well, just so I have a lot of uh, lots of lurkers, my friend. All right, guys. So we are back, and now we have our wits and and a bit more on the tanky side, so we can go ahead and see what we can do with that. No, guys, don't ban him. He's asking a question. That's no. There's no harm in that. Jarl, unban him. There was no harm in what he was asking. He's, he's asking a valid question. Mm -mm. That's a ban I will not agree with. Please don't do it. He's asking a legitimate question. Oh, what was the second part? Oh, I didn't. Okay, I didn't see it. Oh, then yeah, then ban that. I didn't see that part. Alright, YouTube. So, sorry about that. I had a situation on uh, Twitch to deal with. And we just made a big pick. So, Ezreal got close enough to us, so we kind of showed him the uh, rough side of our fist. And dealt with him. Made a pick there. Uh, we definitely need someone to go back and... We definitely need to go run our way back to the camp, make sure that's all clear before we go ahead and attempt the Baron. We don't have Smite, so we need to be a little careful. All right, they just took care of the, the Smite problem. But there is still Ezreal, so guys, if you're against a champion who does have a global, you need to be communicating with your team and start try stop trying to DPS at about like 1K. I'm actually probably gonna stop DPSing it entirely because I don't want him to be able to predict when he can go for the Smite, the uh, ult. Damn it, he's gonna be able to go for it whenever he wants now. He doesn't have good sight. There we go. Not even close, baby. Not even close. Alright. So let's go ahead and we're gonna continue our clear. We're gonna continue our clear, guys, and you know. As you saw, our bot lane kind of fell behind. Actually, we are actually out pacing them in uh, KDA right now. We have more kill participation. But, you know, that is kind of what you need to do. You gotta, oh, you have to remember that even though your bot lane starts strong early, that you still need to guide them to winning. If you want your bot lane not to feed, if you want your bot lane to succeed, you need to be there, you need to be there for them. You need to give them to what they need to, to you know, come back and win. Uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna get, yeah, we're gonna get adaptive, we're gonna get adaptive help this game. I don't have a lot of healing. I have some healing, but not a lot. Alright, so what we're going to do here, we are, need to go for the final push. So, use Baron to get Dragon Soul. Then we win. Alright? No diving. Just play it safe. And wait for Dragon to spawn so we can force that. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and instruct the team what we want to do. 
And do I beat Olaf? Mm, that's honest to God. I, I don't know. That's an honest to God, I don't know answer. Alright. Alright, I do not. He has um, Bramble and I do not. So we're going to go ahead and avoid his ass. Yeah, he has Bramble, I do not. So we do not win that battle. But he's also top lane without his ultimate, so that is it. Yeah, he has he has a full thorn mail. Yeah, yeah. Wait, he has a full thorn mail. Yeah, there's not a way on earth I win that. Not a way on earth I win that battle. All right, now we have Dragon Soul. All right. Yeah. So Olaf, don't know why he was top lane, but definitely not his brightest idea. Alright. Ooh, he's also two levels ahead of me, so not a good idea either. Where did he run off to? Hey, buddy. Uh he's he's around here. Uh let's see if we can catch up to him. Ooh, this time. Alright. He used everything on me? That's fine. You know what? That means he's not over there kicking my Trish on his ass. And that, my friend, just means I did my job. Guys, in the end of the day, Udyr is a champion who does not scale that well. Especially if I'm building full MR while fighting an Olaf. So, here's the thing. My job in the end of the day, is to always and consistently play around my, your, my ADC. Make sure they're a win condition by removing the threats that are going to deal with them. And in this game, I did that by conceivably meet, but forcing Olaf out of any kind of competition. Because guess who's the only person on their team who can deal with my Tristana right now? It's sure as heck not the 4-9 and 3 Ezreal. It's sure as heck not the Thresh, and it's sure as heck not the 3-6-6 six, Rise. It's the 11-9-11 Olaf. And since he spent the end part of his game dealing with me, he wasn't there to help his teammates. And just like that, guys, we have a one game. So, guys, that is how you take your bot lane, make sure they're a winning condition, but more importantly, how you keep them a winning condition throughout the game. I will see you, princes, on the next video. Outro meta, take it from here. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell icon to get notified when the next video video is released. And make sure to join us on Twitch, where I stream Udyr content every single day. Comment your thoughts down below, as well as recommend what builds or rooms you want Meta to go next. Chatter! Chatter.